No, I'm not ready. One, two, three. Oh, I did it! Let's go! Okay, two at the same time. No! Now do a surf. I only know how to surf cakes. Forget it, I'm not leaving caking for tennis. It's not my thing. Cake is my bag. See what I did there? So instead of going to a tennis court, I'm just gonna make a tennis bag. Someone take this from me. Here you go. And for those of you who are looking to make a simpler novelty cake, I'm also gonna make some tennis balls. Before we get into how I made these cakes, I have some news for you. Cake and coffee might just be your way into the trip of a lifetime. Paris Baguette and Lavazza will send one lucky winner and three of their friends to meet me in New York City. We're gonna eat all the food and have all the fun. Plus, there's a huge surprise waiting for the winner. Visit the link in the video description to learn how to enter for a chance to win. This video is sponsored by our friends at Paris Baguette and Lavazza. Oh, it's a whole lot of good chocolate cake. So as usual, I removed them from their pans, I leveled them. Save the humps, save the humps. I haven't said that in a while. You just said it last week. I did? So then we're going to also layer these cakes. Orhan and I have been talking and we think this is probably the biggest cake I've made on how to cake it. Your fridge break when you put it on the shelf? Yes, my fridge gave in. She was like, I can't do this, Yolanda. <laughs> cake alone, we baked 52 pounds of cake. That's just the cake. There's no buttercream yet, there's no fondant yet. So now I have all these cake layers. I have to simple syrup them all. I had to do it in shifts. I did shift work. <laughs> I put out some layers, I simple syrup them, I moved them, then more layers, I simple syrup them, I move them, then more layers, you get the picture. When I carve a cake this large, sometimes what I prefer to do and what I did this time is stack all the cake layers and begin to carve and shape it into the shape of the bag. So I stacked up all of these layers and I just began to cut out a tennis bag shape. Now I'm flavoring my buttercream because I'm going to do two alternating flavors and they're two of my favorites. Coffee buttercream, obviously, and coconut buttercream. I've disassembled the cake layers and now I'm going to start to fill and stack with buttercream, alternating that beautiful coffee buttercream with that beautiful coconut buttercream. That yes. sounds oddly specific. It, it sounds oddly delicious is how it sounds. I'm thrilled to share that I have partnered with Paris Baguette and Lavazza. If you head to your nearest Paris Baguette Cafe, you're gonna find two limited edition tennis themed desserts that I personally helped develop and a beverage to go with them. You're so excited about it. I'm so excited. <laughs> I mean, I spent a day at Paris Baguette headquarters and along with developing these recipes and helping to develop a drink to go with them, I got to just taste them all day. Orhan, cut to the footage of me at the Paris Baguette headquarters, developing. The first dessert is the Drop Shot Bomboloni. It's a donut infused with vanilla and filled with a custard cream topped with a tennis ball glaze and white chocolate. The lines are white chocolate. The second dessert, get ready for it, is the first serve lemon lime blackberry soft cream cake slice. <laughs> is it soft? First serve, <laughs> did I say lemon lime blackberry? Let me do it again. Is the first serve lemon lime blackberry. <laughs> You're doing this. First serve lemon lime blackberry soft cream cake slice. <laughs> Otherwise known, hold on. Otherwise known as the FS, <laughs> as the FSLB FCCS. Oh no, I missed one, it's LL. <laughs> it's a vanilla sponge cake showered in lime simple syrup and layered with lemon soft cream and fresh blackberries. It deserves a title. And of course we need a drink to go with these desserts. So I collaborated with the team and we came up with a courtside coconut oat milk draft iced latte. It is so good. It's the perfect summer 
coffee beverage. This is one of the best iced lattes I've ever had. Visit your nearest participating Paris Baguette Cafe to try this limited edition pairing and enter for a chance to win the New York City trip of your dreams with your favorite people and me. So after spending time in the Paris Baguette test kitchen with Lavazza, I decided to include some of these flavor profiles in the cakes I'm making today. So the big tennis bag cake is going to have coconut buttercream and coffee buttercream, just like the quartzite coconut oat milk draft iced latte and my tennis ball cakes are going to involve the lemon lime blackberry flavor. I'm going to dowel the bottom half of this cake. Make sure you chill it before doweling it. Just give it time to rest and set up. I put 15 dowels in this cake. And then I cut a board perfectly to size, put that on top, and then I continue to stack. If you have this type of tennis bag, if you would see sort of folds and creases. So I'm gonna I make some intentional indents in this bag. Intentional indents. Intentional indents. I cut an opening in the top of the cake, kind of in the shape of like an eye, because I want this bag to look like it's a little bit open, and at the end I'm gonna have a racket handle sticking in there. So I crumb coated the cake, chilled it, with the help of my friends, <laughs> <laughs> Helena and Shuchi. And then this is the point where we put it in the fridge and the fridge was like, Yolanda, not today. And the clips let go and the, and the cake. Um, how could she, how could they oh, refoot yeah, it? Shuchi was road. physically lifting cakes yeah. with me. I'm <laughs> gonna go in and start to ice this cake using just the coconut buttercream for this. And then this is when you really, really wanna let it chill before fondant. It's time to start to cover this cake in fondant. So the body of the bag is going to be white. I rolled out my white fondant a little longer than it needed to be. And then I'm going to roll it backwards onto a French rolling pin and unravel it on the cake. Now, this is really scary and I actually had to do this on my cart because I'm short and I couldn't, I knew I wouldn't be able to like throw the fondant over the other side of the cake. So I, I left it on my cart since it's lower down and I just unraveled that fondant. You do have to keep in mind the weight of the fondant because the weight itself will want to pull down and tear the fondant. And then you go in with your fondant smoother or your hands to smooth it and secure it to the cake. You want to use your fingers to really work the fondant into those intentional grooves. Intentional, intentional grooves. grooves. That's a good album name. Yeah. I love it. Okay. After this, we're going to attempt, not attempt. Well, I should say attempt because my first attempt to cover the backside didn't work out. I had to rip the fondant because here's where gravity is not your friend. At least when I went over the cake, gravity is my friend, right? Because the fondant's gonna rest on top and just the sides are gonna hang. But now I'm trying to cover the side of a cake. So if that fondant doesn't stick right away, it's just gonna wanna peel back and fall down. I decided to roll it backwards onto a French rolling pin and unravel it and then trim away the excess where it meets the rest of the fondant. I'm letting the fondant overlap because I'm planning to create some cording for this bag as a detail. And if there's a little ledge of fondant that will really help sit that cord in place. So now I spoke about cording. I'm going to use my clay extruder. I extruded long cords of this navy fondant and I used piping gel along those ledges I created to add the cording. So the cording frames the front panel, the back panel, and then all along the bottom of the bag. Now I'm gonna roll out some more navy fondant, nice and thin, because I want to cover that opening at the top of the bag. Lower it into that opening, smooth it, and then I'm going to trim away the excess. Now I need to create a zipper. I wanted this bag to look as if it had a double zipper. I have a zipper mold, uh, but it's not big enough for this cake. So what I need to do is create a whole lot of zipper with my mold and then what I did is I pieced together I cut long parts of the zipper and then you know cut out the top of the zipper which wouldn't make sense and then pieced together another piece and went all along and at the opening I had to use a really sharp knife to cut the zipper in half lengthwise so that I could split the zipper at the opening 
Now it's time to work on the bends that will be on the cake. So I roll out more navy blue fondant, and then I'm gonna use, of course, a ruler to cut out strips that are all the same size. I'm using my overstitch tool. It's been a while. It's been such a long time. I while. know, I know. And I'm going to attach them to the bag with piping gel. I also did a little detail at the bottom of the bag by creating like a little rectangle with an X through it as if it was reinforced stitching. Nice. I made sure she had her time to shine, the overstitch <laughs> tool. Okay, this bag needs handles. You have to be able to pick it up. So this is when I was getting really tired. It's late at night, I could have used some Lavazza coffee. So I decided to use wire, and for this I'm gonna cut two hangers. And then I had to make sure that the ends of the hanger were the same distance apart as the two straps on my back. Okay, and I needed to create two of these for a back and a front handle. Just you said you created seven. No, I didn't. Then, <laughs> I didn't, I told you I was tired at this point. And then what I had to do is cover them with navy fondant and this part is just going to be a base so i'm wrapping a strip of fondant around it i'm sort of squeezing it on so that it's sticking to the wire and smoothing it out and i want to make sure both handles are the same size but this needs to dry for a bit so we left this to dry overnight this is the last thing i did and the next day i created more strips of fondant and covered the handles the back and the front and then I added them to the cake and I was so happy because they were the right distance. Like where I put the wires in, the handle met with where those straps were. But now I need to camouflage that area. I'm making buckles. I'm using plain white gum paste, rolling it out, and then I'm using some square cutters to cut out, well, buckles. And I'm just gonna cut these out and leave them to dry. Now these are things you'll wanna make ahead of time because you definitely want them to dry at least a little. Now I need to carefully pick up the buckle with these two bands and glue it to the cake. The shorter side of the strap is gonna be glued to the handle and then the longer side goes down along the strap on the bag. I'm gonna trim the edge nicely, use the overstitch tool and this way it looks like these buckles help hold the straps onto the bag. Nice. It is nice, isn't it? Yeah. So now it's time to add logos to this bag. Orhan. Ask me how tired I was at this point. How tired were you at this point? So I cut out all the Lavazza letters and I was so pleased because they were so neat. At this point when I get tired, it makes me nervous. I took a break, I had a Lavazza coffee and I felt better and then I went on to make the Paris Baguette logo, which I cut out of gum paste, white gum paste. I cut the little logo in the middle out of navy and then topped it with more white gum paste. And then for the fine lettering around the circle, I used a food coloring marker. And then it was time to place them on the cake. So I lay it on, I get three letters in and I'm thinking, why'd I cut out blue letters to put on blue fondant? So at this point I had to take them off and then I had to roll some white gum paste and recut all the letters and then put the template back in place and add the letters. So that was really a lot of fun for me. Oh, racket! I had a racket making the racket, and I have an old fondant rolling pin. And uh, you painted it blue? Did you no, I covered it in gum paste. I added an octagon at the end, and I just shaped it so it was more of an octagonal shape than just round. I need to wrap it with strips of navy blue fondant, because you know how a racket handle looks wrapped up? So that's it? You just like show it in? I gently placed it on the cake between the handles, hoping the handles would help support it in place. Is that it? Is that it? Well, you said you, there's a tennis ball too. Oh, yes, so I was supposed to make one tennis ball and I ended up making three. I baked a lemon vanilla cake, leveled them to the top of the silicone mold. Now I'm gonna use a melon baller to create a secret chamber. I've never made a secret chamber with a melon baller. Yeah. And then I simple syruped all of the halves with lime simple syrup. Spread on some lemon buttercream, which I quickly made by putting a little lemon curd into my Italian meringue buttercream. And then the chamber was just enough for 
a blackberry. And when I iced them with the lemon buttercream, I used my invention to keep them really nice and smooth. Let me know what wild or wacky flavor pairings you like with your coffee. Is there something that's people think is really weird or you think you invented yourself, let me know below. If someone suggests in the comments below a flavor combination I've never used in a cake, I might cake it. What do you think of that? Chocolate and potatoes. No, <laughs> you can do that yourself. <laughs> I'm going to color my fondant to look just like a tennis ball. I was very happy with the results, very happy. You just wanna drape it on top, smooth it as best you can with your hands. Now I need to add the lines. So what I'm going to do is use a strip cutter, rolled out some gum paste really thin, cut out strips, and then I added them to the tennis ball cakes. I initially tried to texture the tennis balls with a clean white towel, bite, but the texture just wasn't taking. And Rachel was here, and Rachel was like, why don't you color royal icing the same as the fondant? and then you can sort of pat it on. Rachel is on our team. She runs all of our Bake You Happy classes. And then so she made that suggestion <laughs> and I ended up doing it and it looks phenomenal. So thank you, Rachel. Shout out to Rachel. So guys, it's your choice. You can make a 52 pound tennis bag or you can make one of these tennis ball cakes. I know it's a hard decision. I know it's a really hard decision. Guys, don't forget to visit the link in the video description to learn how you can win the trip of a lifetime. And I'm gonna meet you there. Drop into your local Paris Baguette Cafe now or visit the link in the video description to learn more. Oh, and don't forget to let me know what you think about the desserts that I helped develop. Leave a comment below. Which one did you try? Which one did you like? I'll see you next week. Thanks for joining me on this cake journey. And to the lucky winner, I can't wait to go on a journey with you. Bye guys. You three friends. Oh, and your three friends. Yes, how come I can't bring three friends? I would bring you, really, but I can't.